You know, it's been almost 18 months since a burning electric vehicle sent a massive cargo ship to the bottom of Davy Jones's locker. But I think that particular drought is about to break. I'm Logan from AutoExpert.com.au, new cars cheap, Australia only, website. God. Here's what we know so far. A massive ship called the Fremantle Highway, it's nearly 200 metres long, carrying almost 3,000 cars, it's on fire in the hugest possible way, just off the Dutch coast, right next to a World Heritage listed precinct of the North Sea. It doesn't get better, does it? It's a so-called Roro ship, not as in yo boat, dude, but rather roll on, roll off. In other words, the cars get driven on and off. So it's essentially just a big floating multi-storey car park on its way from Germany to Egypt. The fire is presently out of control. According to authorities, it could burn for days. All firefighters can do right now is spray the hull with water in an attempt to keep it cool. They can't deliver water into the ship or onto the fire for fear of sinking it because, you know, that's how Archimedes designed buoyancy, basically. Firefighters are not even on the ship presently because that would be too dangerous. The fire could still burn for days. A Coast Guard official who spoke on condition of anonymity told AFP, the ship is being cooled to keep it stable. Only the side of the ship is being sprayed, not the deck. That's a quote from The Guardian. You have to realise they're not actually fighting this fire at all. That's just convenient media soundbite bullshit. Something to bear in mind if you read that in any reports. They're just trying to stop the hull from overheating because if that happens, it might lose its integrity and collapse. That's why the towers collapsed, of course, during the September 11 attacks. The steel got too hot, structural collapse ensued because the concrete can't carry the tension. I'm just putting that one in there to engage the conspiracy nuts. The crew of 23, who are all Indian nationals, is evacuated. Tragically, however, one crew member lost his life and several more have been injured. Their injuries range from breathing issues to burns and broken bones, so no party there. Seven of the crew were faced with a terrible jump or burn proposition during the height of the onset of the emergency. The fire took hold that fast, which kind of suggests EV thermal runaway to me. I guess that kind of thing is an easy decision in the moment, like to jump. I hope never to find out, however, jumping tens of metres down into the North Sea, right next to a giant frickin' ship, would not be my first choice of how to spend an otherwise serviceable Wednesday. The Fremantle Highway has 2,857 cars on board. 25 of those are electric. 350 of them are Mercedes Benzes. No word yet on the other brands, nor the brand or brands of the EVs which are on board. Probably some of the finest German shitboxes, however. Just going out on a limb and speculating with that. Irrespective of what actually caused the fire, when electric car batteries reach a temperature of between about 130 and 270 degrees C, depending on their chemistry and size and some other factors, they enter a state called thermal runaway and the fire cannot be extinguished. You do not fight this kind of fire. You try to keep everything around it cool and you wait for it to get exhausted and go out. EV batteries burn ferociously and energetically like big fat blowtorches and the process cannot be stopped. It just stops on its own when the materials are eventually exhausted by all of that burning. The risk here is the complete catastrophic structural collapse of the ship, leading to complete loss of the vessel and the cargo. All of that embodied energy, the CO2 emitted by all of that manufacturing, the 18 million kilos of steel in the ship itself, 
the 3 million kilos of steel in the cars, plus the attendant environmental catastrophe, the toxic chemicals, the fuel, the oil, etc. This is exactly what happened to the Felicity Ace in February of 2022. The Felicity Ace's fire had actually gone out, it was just being towed, and then it simply collapsed and disappeared below the surface. The Coast Guard said on its website that the cause of the fire was unknown, but a Coast Guard spokesperson had earlier told Reuters it began near an electric car. Roughly 25 out of the 2,857 vehicles on the ship were electric. I agree that the root cause of the fire might be unknown at this point, but the earlier comment about near an EV is likely to be from a crew member's first-hand account to rescue authorities. The way Coast Guard type agencies and other first responders work is they consider the cause officially unknown because they launch an official investigation every time and that's going to run for months and until its findings are handed down, the cause is listed as officially unknown. It is officially unknown because it's under investigation, as in yet to be determined. Part of that investigation will doubtless involve interviewing the survivors and the first responders, getting their take on the nature of the fire and how it looked and how fast it spread, what colour was the freaking smoke, etc. But there's only one plausible explanation why the fire is so ferocious and cannot be extinguished. Those EV batteries are in thermal runaway. There is no other possible explanation. Shipping company Shoei Kaisen Keisha Limited said, we are now trying to extinguish the fire in cooperation with the local authorities of the Netherlands, the Salvor and the ship management company. That's a quote from our ABC. It's also literally untrue. There's no extinguish option for thermal runaways. That's why they call them runaways. I also don't see how the shipping company is in any way involved in frontline fire suppression efforts. The company told the Dutch public broadcaster NOS there was, quote, a good chance that the fire started with electric cars, of which about 25 were on board, quote, but we are not entirely sure of the cause. We are waiting for the investigation it said. That's also from our ABC. So the jury's not back, but frankly, it's not looking all that good for the EVs, is it? On the balance of probability. It also strikes me that electric cars have become a little like the way guns are in the USA. For a small but vocal group in society, they've become a religion. If you talk gun control to a full tilt Second Amendment plonker, it doesn't matter what the stats say, what the facts say, that stuff's irrelevant. It's like suggesting that there's no evidence for the existence of a God to a born-again Christian. To a paid-up EV nutcase, a card-carrying electric utopian, casting aspersions on EVs because they probably just caused another half a billion dollars in damages, well, that's just as unpalatable, right? You are insulting their religion. And you have to remember, the facts don't matter. In a ship full of vehicles, each of which is carrying their own at least partially full energy storage container, whether that be a gas tank or a battery, it's going to be hard to put out a fire because there is a lot of fuel available for that fire. That's from the electrically devout website Electric in a story entitled... Surprise! Media is misreporting the source of a Dutch cargo ship fire. There's a lot to unpack there, starting with, I suppose, the bleeding obvious. If those pelicans are going to accuse the media, whoever they are, of misreporting, then they probably should get their fucking headline right, I'd suggest. The Fremantle Highway is registered in Panama and operated by a Japanese shipping company. The fact that the fire is burning off the coast of the Netherlands, well, to me at least, that hardly makes it a, quote, Dutch cargo ship fire. So there's that. Now, on this business of, quote, 
it's going to be hard to put out a fire because there is a lot of fuel available for that fire. Physics and chemistry, they say, liquid hydrocarbon fires certainly have abundant fuel, but they require atmospheric oxygen in order to burn. The rate of combustion is therefore limited by the access to air, which, let's not forget, is only 21% oxygen gas. As you can see from the images of the Fremantle Highway, it's a big steel box with very few apertures to allow air in. Therefore, an onboard liquid hydrocarbon fire would burn slowly and inefficiently, and smoke from such a fire would typically billow plumes of thick black smoke being the carburised soot of inefficient combustion. It doesn't seem to be happening here, does it? Further, given that there is a mix of fuels, it's hard to pick a single tactic to put all of them out at once because firefighting methods are different for different types of fires. That's electric there again from the same story. You can put out a liquid hydrocarbon fire by simply depriving it of access to air. But battery fires, they don't work that way. A battery in thermal runaway cannot be put out. These are called facts, and you don't have to like them. In fact, facts promise not to give a fuck how you feel about them. They're still facts. The reason this fire is so hot and so energetic and so resistant to being put out is that in a thermal runaway, the battery electrolyte decomposes exothermically and it manufactures its own oxygen gas because there's a hell of a lot of elemental oxygen locked up in the electrolyte. So this battery in thermal runaway, it's got its own fuel, it makes its own heat and oxygen, ergo shutting the windows or spraying it with water or foam or flooding the space with frickin' CO2 or halon. It's really not going to help. Those fuckers just burn until they exhaust their chemicals and only then do they go out. There is no fighting the fire from an EV in thermal runaway. So I guess if you're that angry, insufferable, virtuous believer in electric utopia, you're a paid up sipper of the Electric Hazels Kool-Aid Club, then please at least acknowledge the salient facts, which are, firstly, while an electric car may not have been the spark that caused this fire, the presence of those electric cars on that ship in that way is the reason this fire cannot be fought, why it is so intense and why the vessel is in such danger of imminent catastrophic collapse. Secondly, add the Felicity Ace to the Fremantle Highway and you can see that the safe shipping provisions for EVs are spectacular spectacularly inadequate. How many half billion dollar examples of catastrophes like this do we actually need as a species before word gets around?